हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू फेयर्स क्लव लर्न टू लीड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल दी स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो वी ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड द नवंबर मंथ टॉपिक वाइज करंट अफेयर एंड टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज इंटरनेशनल अफेयर्स दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरी टाइप ऑफ एग्जाम सो वॉच दिस वीडियो केयरफुली एंड वॉच टिल लास्ट बट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू डाउनलोड अर एप्लीकेशन करियर्स क्लाउड फ्रॉम द गूगल प्ले स्टोर आफ्टर दैट लॉग इन विद योर ई मेल आई डी देन क्लिक ऑन दिस क्रैक करंट फेयर सेक्शन टू सब्सक्राइब अ करंट फेयर फॉर वन ईयर एज वेल एज फॉर टू ईयर्स बोथ द सब्सक्रिप्शन प्राइज आर वेरी मच लो बट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग बट वी आर कवरिंग अंडर दिस वन ईयर एंड द टू ईयर सब्सक्रिप्शन वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू डेली सेक्शन इन द डेली सेक्शन यू विल रिसीव थ्री थिंग्स वन इज द डिटेल करंट फेयर सेकंड इज द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर फॉर्मेट ऑफ करंट फेयर बट बोथ विल बी प्रोवाइडेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पी डी एफ और इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ई बुक एंड थर्ड इज द क्विज सेक्शन एंड दिस कैन बी अटेम्प्टेड ओनली ऑन आर एप्लीकेशन ऑन डेली बेसिस next is the weekly section again we are providing three things one is the detail current fair second is the question and answer format but both things will be provided in the pdf format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis next is the monthly section and in the monthly section we are providing you four type of pdfs one is the detail current fair pdf which is known as study pdf next all the detail current fairs will be converted in the form of question and answer that's why it is known as question and answer pdf so that you can revise all the current fairs in the question and answer format next is the best 100 current fairs will be provided that is also provided in the form of question and answer and last is the pocket pdf it means one liner two liner or the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs very quickly before your exam next is topic wise current fair this is very important section because we are providing 20 most important topic wise pdf if you want to revise one or two particular topics then you can use this topic wise pdf if you are a banking student then we are providing three things one is detail second is question and answer format of current fairs but only related to banking and economy and third is the quiz section it is also only related to banking and economy and you can attempt this quiz section only on our application on monthly basis next is exam pdf if you want to cover all the current fairs before your exam of particular year then you can use this exam pdf next is special current fair section in the special current fair we are providing you budget and economics survey two things we are providing one is detail budget and economics survey second is question and answer format of budget and economics survey it means you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economics survey If you are preparing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing state current fairs, and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. First of all, you have to just download our application Careers Cloud, then click on this Crack Current Fair section, and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two years. And if you want ten percent extra discount, then you can use this code ASH one zero. If you have any query, then you can email us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start the November month topic wise current fair and today topic of discussion is international affairs and this international affairs belongs to the November month and here is the first question the world trade organization recently announced it will take a substantial role in the upcoming conference of the parties to the UNFCCC or United Nation framework on convention on climate change which will be held in Sham Al Sheikh and Sham Al Sheikh is situated in Egypt so answer of this question is 4 so dr nagozi dr nagozi okonzo okonzo who is the director general of world trade organization also attended the world leader summit events and world trade organization world trade report 2022 titled as climate climate change and international trade and international trade also released at the cop 27 so just remember world trade organization will take a substantial role in the upcoming conference of the parties to the un f triple c or united nation framework on convention on climate change which was held on sham al sheikh in egypt from 6 to 18th of november 2022 this is very very important question about cop 27 and exact place is sham al sheikh moving to next question name the organization that was recently released a report the adaptation gap report 2022 too little too slow climate adaptation failure puts the world at risk stating adaptation efforts by the nations are not consistent with the climate risk and this organization is one and only united nation environment program so answer of this question is second so adaptation needs adaptation needs require almost 340 billion dollar billion dollar per year by the year of 2030 but currently it stands at less than 1/10th of this amount 
the estimated annual adaptation needs 160 to 340 billion dollar by the year of 2030 and 315 to 565 billion dollar by the year of 2050. So this is the adaptation gap report 2022 and this is released by UNEP. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are correct with respect to the US news and the world report released in the month of November 2022? So let's find out the points. First one, according to the US news and the world reports overall best countries 2022 ranking, India has bagged 31st rank among the 85 countries. 31st rank among the 85 countries. This statement is true. And you can also remember the best countries 2022 is the seventh edition of analysis released by the US News and World Report. And France has topped the list followed by Germany and Canada. This is basically wrong. Switzerland topped under this index. Switzerland has topped the list followed by Germany. Second rank goes to Germany and third rank goes to Canada. This statement is wrong. India has topped the list of nations with the cheapest manufacturing cost by the global under open for business sub ranking of 2022 best countries ranking. This statement is true. So only correct statement is A and C. So answer of this question is 4. Moving to next question. As per the World Bank Group Climate and Development and Agenda for Action, investing an average of 1.4% of the GDP yearly could reduce emissions in developing nations as much as 70% by dash year and build resilience. And this is by the year of 2050. So answer of this question is second. So according to analysis which is known as climate and development. Climate and development and agenda for action investing on an average of 1.4% of GDP yearly could reduce emissions in developing nations as by as 70% by the year of 2050 and build resilience and the analysis climate and development collects and harmonizes finding from the country climate and development reports of the World Bank group which cover more than 20 countries and are accountable for 34% of global greenhouse gas emission. Moving to next question. Which organization has recently released the 2022 edition of State of Food and Agriculture Leveraging Agriculture Automation for Transforming Agri-Food System? And this organization who published this report is Food and Agriculture Organization. Answer of this question is 4. So United Nation Food and Agriculture Organization has released this 2022 state of the food and agriculture which is also known as SOFA report and this examined how automation in our agri-food system might contribute to reaching sustainable development goals and SOFA is one of the food and agriculture organization major annual flagship publication aiming to offer balanced science and balanced science based assessment of vital issues in the food and agriculture. And the report examined 27 case studies spanning multiple technologies across the world. And out of 27 cases, the service providers only 10 are profitable and financially stable. Moving to next question. Name the world's first one dose drug that has been approved by the European Union to protect babies against the respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. And this one dose drug is Nirsevimab. Answer of this question is 1. So the European Union authorized a lab developed antibody known as Nirsevimab, the world's first one dose drug by AstraZeneca and Sanofi to protect babies during the first exposure to the respiratory syncytial virus, a highly contagious common sickness that infects nearly all babies by the age of 2. And it is RSV passive immunization for the general newborn population including those born healthy at the term or prematurity or with special medical issues. Moving to next question. Which organization released a report named as how just transition can deliver the Paris Agreement with the key finding that nations that fail to recognize the opportunity given by Green Revolution face increased social inequality, civil unrest and a less competitive economy. And this report is published by UNDP. So answer of this question is United Nations Development Program. 
so according to UNDP report titled as how just transition can deliver the Paris Agreement nations that fail to recognize the opportunities given by a green revolution face increased social inequality civil unrest and less competitive economy if suggested net zero emission paths are not carried out efficiently and the concept of a just transition is critical to fulfilling the Paris Agreement global climate targets as countries transition to the sustainable economies and the report examines both enhanced short term climate pledges referred to as nationally determined contributions and long term strategies in which governments explain their plans for the net zero emission. So very important findings. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are correct with respect to the QS Asia University Ranking 2023 which is released by Quackerly Siemens in the November 2022? So let's find out which statement is correct. 19 Indian universities are featured among the top 200 universities on the 15th edition of this QS Asia University Ranking 2023. Very important. 19 Indian universities are featured among the top 200. This is important. So first statement is true. Next is Peking University in Beijing, China has topped the QS Asia University Ranking 2023 and second rank goes to National University of Singapore. Second rank goes to National University of Singapore. This statement is also true. And you can remember the QS Asia University Ranking 2023 featuring 760 Asian universities and second rank is National University of Singapore which has ranked first for four consecutive years is now ranked second. Earlier it was on the first position, now it is on the second position. Next is IIT Bombay is on the top from India, overall global rank is 40th. IIT Delhi is on the second spot, overall 46th rank, IIC Bengaluru 52nd and uh, global rank is 52nd but otherwise on the third spot have topped among the Indian universities. So you can remember these top three universities in the ranking. One is IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi and IIC Bengaluru. This is again very important. And you can remember this Chandigarh University has become the youngest university in Asia to feature in the top 200 universities in the QS Asia Universities of Asia. So all the statements are correct. So answer of this question is all 1, 2, 3. Move into next question. Which of the following points are correct? Correct with respect to the World Travel Market 2022 held in November 2022. This is again very important question. So let's read out. The Ministry of Tourism, Government of India participated in the World Travel Market 2022, one of the largest international travel exhibition which was held in London, United Kingdom. This is important. This World Travel Market 2022 hosted by London. So first statement is true. The theme of World Travel Market 2022 is the future of travel starts now. This statement is also true. Tamil Nadu Tourism, Street Tourism Project has won the prestigious Responsible Tourism Global Award at the World Travel Market 2022. This is basically wrong because this is Kerala's. Kerala's Tourism, Street Tourism Project has won the prestigious Responsible Tourism Global Award at the World Travel Market 2022 for the water conservation. Water conservation scheme taken up under the street project which is a first of its kind initiative in the world. And street is an acronym for sustainable, tangible, responsible, experimental, ethnic and tourism hub. So answer of this question because third statement is wrong. So answer of this question is both 1 and 2. Moving to next question. Who has recently received the honorary Brazilian citizenship? This is again static question and interesting question. Who has recently received the honorary Brazilian citizenship? This is Lewis Hamilton. Answer of this question is 1. So Lewis Hamilton, a British Formula 1 racing driver has awarded the honorary Brazilian citizenship during a ceremony in the country special Brasilia. And Lewis Hamilton, the seven-time world champion, has been granted honorary Brazilian citizenship ahead of the 2022 Brazilian Grand Prix. Moving to next question. Which of the following countries was recently removed from the United States currency monitoring list along with Italy and Mexico? Static question. Remember the question as MS in slide. And this country is Thailand, India and Vietnam. So answer of this question is all 1, 2, 3. So United States Department of Treasury removed India along with Italy, 
Mexico, Thailand and Vietnam from its currency monitoring list of the major trading partners that merit close attention to their currency practices and macroeconomic policies. And India had been on the list for the last two years. And this move followed the US Secretary of the Treasury Janet Zellin visit to the New Delhi where she held talks with the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman. And still China, Japan, Korea, Germany, Malaysia, Singapore and Taiwan are the seven economies that are a part of the current monitoring list. Very important. Moving to next question. As per the Food Outlook Report, which is basically a biannual report on the global food market released by Food and Agriculture Organization, which predicts that the projects of a higher, higher than anticipated increase in world food import bill with an estimated dash trillion dollar in 2022. This is almost two trillion dollar. Answer of this question is four. Interesting question that Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nation has published a report titled as Food Outlook by annual report on the global food market, which projects that a higher than anticipated increase in world food import bill with an estimated of $1.94 trillion or approximately $2 trillion. And uh, it is in the basically 2022. And according to the food outlook report, the new forecast indicated an all time high and a 10% increase over the record level of 2021. High income nations are responsible for the bulk of this bill increase, which is, which is primarily attributable to rising global prices, while volumes are also expected to rise. Moving to next question. According to the World Bank report released in the month of November, India needs to invest dash amount per annum into the urban infrastructure to meet the needs of the fast growing urban population and total amount is 55 billion dollar. So answer of this question is 4. So the name of the report is Financing India Urban Infrastructure Needs and as per it India needs to invest 840 billion dollar over the next 15 years till the year of 2036 in the level of 2020 prices or an average of 55 billion dollar per annum into urban infrastructure to meet the needs of fast growing urban population and 840 billion dollar in the next 15 years is equivalent to 1.18 percent of estimated gdp over this period moving to next question according to the united nation world population prospectus 2022 the global population is projected to achieve dash on 15th of November 2022. Already achieved, this is 8 billion on 15th of November 2022. And India is expected to overtake China as the world most populated country by the year of 2023. So answer of this question is second. So remember, the World Population Prospectus 2022 is published by, published to commemorate World Population Day of 2022, which was celebrated on 11th of July, which occurred in the year in which the world population welcomed the birth of its 8th billionth inhabitant. And according to the United Nations most recent estimated, the world population might reach 8.5 billion in 2030 and 9.7 billion in 2050. So remember, according to the United Nations World Population Prospectus of 2022, the global population is projected to achieve 8 billion on 15th of November, already achieved, and India is expected to overtake China as the world most populated country by the 2030, 2023. Moving to next question. Which organization recently released a report named as State of the Climate in Asia 2021? This is the name of the report with the key finding that the Asian region was warming faster than the global average in 2021. And this report is published by World Meteorological Organization. Answer of this question is second. So World Meteorological Organization has at least a report named as State of the Climate in Asia 2021, which was prepared in collaboration with the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. And the report was presented at the COP27 to the United Nations Climate Change Conference, which was held in Egypt, Sharm el Sheikh. And according to the report, the Asian region was warming faster than the global average with economic losses 
from extreme weather events like floods, droughts amounting more than $35 billion in 2021, including at least $7.5 billion in India. Moving to next question. According to 2022 Mid-Year Trends Report released by United Nations High Commissioner for Refuge, report that Dash people were forcibly displaced across the globe, across the globe, and total are almost 100 billion or 103 million. So, according to 2022 Mid-Year Trends Report released by United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the number of forcibly displaced people across the globe was estimated at 103 million. Compared to the end of 2021, the number of forcibly displaced people in 2022 has increased by more than 15%. And this is the biggest proportional increase between the years since 1979 to 1980. And this report provided the up-to-date and comprehensive statistics from 1st of Jan to 30th of June 2022. That's why it is known as Mid-Year Trends Report. Next question is, according to the Knight Frank Data Center report released in November 2022, which of the following Indian city is among the largest data center market in the Asia-Pacific region? And these cities are New Delhi, Chennai and Hyderabad. Answer of this question is all 1, 2, 3. So, according to Knight Frank Data Report, it is a quarter 3 of 2022 report which focuses on Asia-Pacific growth market. Indian cities such as Hyderabad, Chennai and New Delhi has evolved as the three of the top, top data centers market in the Asia-Pacific region. And the market analysis include nine cities in the Asia-Pacific region like Osaka is there. Melbourne is there, Saka is on the top, Melbourne is there in uh, Australia and uh, Jakarta is there in Indonesia, Manila in Philippines, Hanoi in Vietnam, Taipei in Taiwan and Indian cities like Hyderabad, New Delhi and Chennai. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are correct with respect to the visit of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Bali, Indonesia in November 2022? This question is the most important question of the year. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid an official visit to Bali. Why he visited Bali? It is to attend the 17th, this number is important, 17th G20 summit under the Indonesian presidency on the theme of recover together, recover stronger. And the summit was held under the Indonesian presidency on the theme of recover together, recover stronger. This statement is true. And Indonesia's president handed over this G20 presidency to India, which will officially assume the G20 presidency from 1st of December already assumed and will focus on the theme of Vasudeva Kutumbakam or One Earth, One Family, One Future underlying equitable growth and shared future for all. It means this is the 17th, it means 18th G20 summit will be held in 2023 and it will be hosted by India in New Delhi from 9th to 10th of September 2023. Remember this is very important point. During the summit, the World Trade Organization's 28th Trade Monitoring Report, G20 nations introduced export restrictions at an increased pace, particularly on food and fertilizer between mid-May and mid-October 2022. This statement is also true. The launch of Indonesia's Just Energy Transition Partnership, which is an agreement of Indonesia with the G7 countries to decarbonize Indonesia's coal-powered economy. This is again true statement. So, all these statements are correct. So, answer of this question is all ABC, but the most important point is the first point. Moving to next question. Which Indian Navy ship recently participated in the Sea SWAT 2, the combined maritime forces led focused operation to counter terrorism, prevent narcotics trade and stop smuggling entities from using the sea? And the Indian Navy ship Trikant, answer of this question is 1. INS Trikant participated in the Sea SWAT 2 Combined Maritime Forces led focused operation held between 6 to 14th of November 2022 in the Northwest Arabian Sea to counter terrorism, prevent narcotics trade, and stop smuggling entities from using the sea. And the Indian Navy Long Range Maritime Patrol Aircraft also participated in the operation and provided air support. And the effort is a part of the Indian Navy's commitment towards ensuring safety of the sea and collective security in the region supported by Prime Minister Sagar Vision. Moving to next question. 
which of the following points are incorrect with respect to the United Nation Framework on the Convention of Climate Change COP27 held in Egypt in November 2022. So let's find out which statement is incorrect. First one is the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure unveiled the Infrastructure Resilient Accelerator Fund which is a CDRI multi-partner trust fund. This statement is true. Next is Larson and Tubro Limited has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Egyptian Sugar and Integrated Industries Company. This statement is wrong because this is not LNT. This is Praj Industries. Praj Industries Limited, an Indian industrial biotech company, has signed a MOU with the Egyptian Sugar and Integrated Industries Company on the sidelines of the COP27. Next is India and Sweden hosted the lead IT summit on the margins of the COP27 in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. This is again very very important point because India and Sweden hosted this lead IT summit. This statement is true. The toolbox of solutions for the urban decarbonization was introduced at COP27 by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the four prominent organizations. This statement is true and India committed to create carbon sink carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent by the year of 2030. So fourth statement is also correct. Only incorrect statement is second. Moving to next question. The World Health Organization has stated that antimicrobial resistance will reduce global annual gross domestic product by 3.8% by which year? This is by the year of 2050. Answer of this question is 1. And just remember the question as same as in slide. And if the situation remains unchecked in the next decade, this could result in a GDP shortfall. GDP shortfall of $3.4 trillion annually and push around 24 million people into extreme poverty. So the World Health Organization has stated that in a high impact scenario, antimicrobial resistance will reduce global annual gross domestic product by 3.8% by the year of 2050. Moving to next question. In November 2022, Qatar Energy signed world longest 27 year gas supply deal with which country? This is very important and this country is China. 4 is the answer. So Qatar Energy signed a 27 year natural gas supply deal with China referring to it as the longest ever seen as it strengthened ties with the Asia at a time when Europe looking for the alternate supplies. The China Petroleum and Chemical Corporation will get 4 million tons of liquefied natural gas annually from the state energy company New North Field East Project. Moving to next question. According to the Times Higher Education 12th edition of the Global Employability University Ranking and Survey 2022-23, Dash was the highest ranked Indian university with a global rank of 28th. And this Indian institute is IIT Delhi. Answer of this question is second. So the Times Higher Education released the 12th edition of Annual Global Employability University Ranking and Survey 2022-23 which was conducted by HR Consultancy Emerging and published by the Times Higher Education. It featured seven Indian universities among the top 250 universities in the world for graduate employability and the IIT Delhi or Indian Institute of Delhi was the highest ranked Indian university with a global rank of 28th and the only Indian universities in the top 50. It was ranked 27 in the year of 2021 but now rank is 28th. And IIT Delhi is basically followed by Indian Institute of Science Bengaluru whose global rank is uh, 58th, 58th rank and IIT Bombay rank is 72, global rank is 72nd and are the only Indian institute among the top 100. It means in top 100 total 3 institutes are there, one is IIT Delhi, second is IIT Bombay and third one is Indian Institute of Science Bengaluru and Massachusetts. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA has topped the global university employability ranking of 2022. So Indian Institute who topped this ranking is IIT Delhi and otherwise all over world this is Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Moving to next question. 
as per the world intellectual property indicators 2021 and this is a report which is released by wipo world intellectual property organization global innovators submit dash patent application in the year of 2021 which is an increase of 3.6 percent from the year of 2020 and total patent applications submitted in the year of 2021 are 3.4 million so answer of this question is 4 so according to world intellectual property indicators 2021 report global innovators submitted 3.4 million patent applications in the year of 2021 which is an increase of 3.6 percent if we are comparing with 2020 nearly 67.6 percent of all applications worldwide were received by offices in asia this is very interesting and this report is released by wipo world intellectual property organization next is according to a joint publication by the world health organization and the united states center for the disease control and prevention nearly dash children have missed a measles vaccine dose in 2021 due to the covid 19 pandemic this is again a serious concern and this is 40 million children answer of this question is four so uh, around 25 million children have missed their first dose and 14.7 million children have missed their second dose and the decline in measles vaccine represents a major setback in the global progress to eliminate the measles so remember this is according to a joint publication by the world health organization and the united states center for disease control and prevention nearly 40 million children have missed a measles vaccine dose in 2021 due to covid 19 pandemic so this is all for today i think you like this video please like share and subscribe our channel and thank you for watching this video and you can join our all platforms like facebook instagram linkedin and telegram channel and telegram channel link is given in the description box so again thank you for watching this video please like share and subscribe take care bye bye